What's going on everybody? Welcome back to a very special video. Today we have Kenji on here. Kenji is a YouTuber extraordinaire, data scientist, entrepreneur, inspirer, and a close personal friend. He is one of the first content creators in this niche, a pioneer in the space, a potential America's next top model. Everybody, please welcome Kenji. Thank you for being here. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Alex. Yeah. Um, you know, we're doing this like really unique thing where a bunch of the YouTubers in this space are getting together making videos, doing interviews, um, and you were like top of my list. I, I mean, I was just really excited to have you on. Um, I have a lot of, I would say, unique questions because I feel like most people know who you are. Most people have seen your channel. I've sent people to your channel as well. And so I feel like on the data side, most people know who you are, right? But hopefully in this interview, I want to ask some more like personal, very personal questions. Um, and just see where, see where it goes, see where it leads us. Um, if we only answer one question, it leads us down a great rabbit hole. I'm ready to go for that journey. That sounds great. I am hopefully an open book, so <laughs> well, let's do it to it. Awesome. Um, so before we get started for anybody who does not know who Kenji is, he's a great YouTuber. I'll let you speak to yourself for just a, you know, a minute if you want to, and then we'll get going. Yeah, sure. So my name's Kenji. I make data science related content on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on medium, on across a bunch of these platforms. Uh, my mission is to help make data science more accessible to everyone, whether that's through a talking head video, through a tutorial, or through any type of fun, goofy type of skit or other type of content like that. Awesome. Yeah. And go check out his YouTube channel. It's fantastic. I'm sure you guys have already done that, but if you haven't, go check him out. Um, you know, I've seen so many of your videos. I've seen videos with you with a lot of different people, your dad, like all these other people. And so I'm, I'm curious, you know, who has inspired you the most just like in your career and just in your life in general? I'd have to say uh, myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. This is taking, uh, taking your turn. You know, it's interesting. I draw inspiration from everyone that I interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. So I see a lot of content like the, like the content you produce, like Tina produces, like Forrest Knight over here produces. <laughs> and I think to me, seeing what everyone else is doing helps me to innovate, helps me to get up each day and want to build and create more interesting stuff and educational stuff. I also draw quite a lot of inspiration from the people who are tuning into my content, whether mm -hmm. it's the podcast or whether it's my YouTube channel, because they're the best feedback mechanism that I could possibly have. Sure. They're telling me essentially if the things that I'm doing are working, if they're good, if they're not so good, if I'm making like a cringy thumbnail face <laughs> and it's not they'll on tell brand. You. Yeah, they'll let me know. And I've gotten really, I'd like to think really good over time at looking at all feedback, whether it's criticism or whether it's praise and looking at it fairly objectively yeah, and trying to integrate that into everything I do and saying, is this something that would make the quality of what I produce better? Would it create more value for people? And if not, maybe I should stop doing some things and, and start doing others. Sure. Well, okay. So like, that's how, you know, you find some inspiration through YouTube. What about like outside of YouTube? Is there like a single person or, or somebody in your life that's like, you know, you feel like has helped you become who you are today? So I am an avid reader. Mm -hmm. I've read quite a few books. Um, and I think if you're talking about like mentorship or individual inspiration, you can get the condensed work of someone's essentially entire life mm -hmm. in a book that you can read in a couple hours. And to me, that's so powerful. So a couple that have been really valuable for me, uh, one I find really inspiring is um, Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. That was one that made a really big impact on my life. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it makes you go through and audit your value system, audit a lot of the, the ways you approach things, and mm -hmm. it helps you to um, reconcile any conflicts that you have between your values. So an example of that would be, I might value freedom, but I might also value family quite a bit. Right. And those two, in some sense, are a little bit conflicting. Right. If I want ultimate freedom, a family means you probably can't travel as much. It means you can't do some of these other things. Right. But, but you know, like if I want both of those things, I have to figure out how to work those together. And if I don't think about how those things work together in my life, that causes stress or conflict or some of those other things. Yeah. Um, some other books I thought were really interesting, or other, I guess, like people or figures I thought were really interesting. Um, so I went to the University of Virginia, and um, Thomas Jefferson is like quite. Um, quite relevant there. He founded right. the school and I read his, one of his biographies and I, I found it fascinating how well read ever, like essentially the elites of that time period were. Right. They're always like 
working on things. They knew so many different languages. They had all these things. And that was largely because there was absolutely nothing else to do <laughs> aside from learn and read and, and think. Right. And to me, that's really inspiring. We're, we're such a consumption culture where it's just like, uh, I'm going to browse Instagram. I'm going to have all these things like talking at me. It would be really cool to tap into that sort of like boredom that they used to have that would inspire you to be to like read or to learn or consume information because I feel like that's something we're like we're losing a little bit and I want to try to to steal back a little bit of that in my life yeah I love that yeah to, uh, when you're talking about Tony Robbins the first thing that came to my mind is like he's he's one he's really he's a very neat person um, but two, my wife is like a huge Tony Robbins nice. fan. Have you, would, would you ever go to like one of his like seminars or one of his like, um, you know, like two week long camps that he has? <sighs> Probably not. No. <laughs> um, well, one of my friends did and he said it was like an awesome experience. Like everyone, like the energy in the room, those types of things. Yeah. My personal development journey is a little bit more like private to me. I got you. I, I share the things I'm working on. I share what my aspirations and goals are, mm -hmm. but... I really enjoy the process of introspection and just like reading and thinking and journaling and, and going through and, and sort of creating that map for myself. Right. Um, I don't, I'm like very motivated to begin with, I think. And me being around other people isn't going to make me more likely to make a change. If I, if yeah. I want to make a change, it's like I'm doing it today and we're right. going at it uh, hardcore. No, that makes perfect sense. Tony Robbins is definitely like, it's an energy thing. Like, you know, he's like, if you're around people and you motivate yourself and you make it happen, like it's def I, I totally understand that. Um, the next one is a little slightly different, which is, you know, who knows you the best out of anybody that you know, and, and how would they describe you? Mm, who knows me the best? I'd probably say my dad knows me the best. Um, I talk with him quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, he shares like some sense of philosophy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he sort of beat into me from a young age that you want to work for yourself. Right. I mean, he was a, he was a, a doctor or he's an oral surgeon, I guess, but uh, he owned his own practice and that was like very freeing for him. Right. And that's something that for some reason always stuck with me with everything I do. And in some sense I work for myself now. Yeah. Um, what would he say about me? Like, how would he, how would he describe you? I know. I'm trying to think. I, <laughs> how he described me to my face versus how he described me to his totally friends different. is totally different. Yeah. I believe that because I've seen some of the videos that he's been on and he, he's, got, he's, a, he's a personality. I like him a lot. Yeah. My, my dad is a character. <laughs> um, he'd probably say that I have big dreams and I'm a little bit rash mm -hmm. um, to my face in terms of like like fatherly judgment. Right. I think to his friends, he'd say that um, in some sense, he's proud of what I've created and that I'm very like, I'm very much an independent thinker. Mm -hmm. And if there's something I want, I am very willing to go after it. Yeah. Um, he'd also say that <laughs> he would always tell me this. Like, he's like, when I would do something like, dad, I want to get a tattoo, which I never <laughs> did. He's like, I don't have to wear it. <laughs> and that's his philosophy on all these things. Yeah. Like, you can do it. Like it's not my it's, life. Yeah. It's your life, but right. I'm going to make fun of you if it goes south. So right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, well. that's, that's wise advice right yeah, there. Exactly. Yeah. I always think it's interesting because the people who know you like the best, you know, there could be a hundred people out there who are like watching it. Like, I don't like Kenji. I was one of those people, <laughs> but no, like the person who knows you the best, you know, how they describe you. It, that usually has like the biggest meaning or like is, has the most truth to it. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's great that you are an independent thinker and, and do that stuff. Cause I mean, it's hard to do that in today's world. With, yeah. I can also bug sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to be very self-motivated yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> my next question, and this is one that I've, I, I thought about myself a lot because, you know, people watch our content, but that doesn't mean they necessarily know who we are. And so what do you think is the thing that people misunderstand about you the most? Hmm. Um, I, I think maybe it's around my content, a lot of the things I produce. Mm -hmm. I do all these things because I enjoy them, right? I mean, yes, there is some, some income and those types of things that come from it, but I don't do anything that I don't have full interest in and full passion for. So you think people think they have a misunderstanding that you're doing it for like either money or fame or whatever? No, I think they might have a misconception that I'm doing it because I like have to do it. Oh, right. Right. Like I'm doing it because you reached is, a certain point. 
yeah, this is a creative endeavor for right. me. This is something where I want to experiment. I want to explore. Um, and, you know, there's some things that people ask me to do that I just simply don't want to do and I'm not going to do it. Yeah. It's like, hey, make this type of video. I'm like, oh, it's like really, really boring for me. I'm, I'm not right. going to do it. I'm not going to put it out there. I also do get immense joy out of creating value for people. So there is that trade off. Like, yeah. I'll sometimes make a video where I'm like, oh, I'm okay, excited about this, mm -hmm. but everyone else is super excited about this and I, right. I want to jump on that. Um, and so I think that that's, that's maybe something that uh, is a misconception about a lot of creators because I think everyone views it a little bit differently. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've gotten the same feedback of, you know, people are like, you know, he's just doing it now for this. I'm like, yeah, that's not true. So I, I've, I've under, I can understand that, um, that, you know, that thought. Mm -hmm. it, it sucks because, you know, you don't want to go and make a video about it or like a post about it because nobody cares. <laughs> like nobody's going to care about it. But um, yeah, super interesting. All right. Next question. Your channel has grown incredibly fast and people obviously like you and your content. Why do you think you've grown faster than other channels who create similar content? So something I started out with when I was like really early in my YouTube journey was that every video I would try to work on one specific thing to improve upon. Mm -hmm. So maybe it was Bef when I would stop speaking, I would just like cut mm -hmm. and like I needed to add a little pause after to make sure that there's like a gap in the video. Right. Right. And so it doesn't, it looks like a clean cut rather than a messy cut. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'd try a different camera, ang camera angle or I'd try to like set up the background differently or I would try to say um one last time when I'm talking. <laughs> Some, things along those lines. Right. So there's a steady improvement cycle that I would try to make. And I yeah. think that that paid dividends early on. I would yeah. also say that not that many people were making the style of content that I was making early on. Right. And I had a massive advantage then. So, I mean, now everyone's making really good content. There's a lot of people in this space. Yeah. And I think it's a lot harder to break in with the content that I was making back then. Like, it just wouldn't cut it. It's just not good compared to what other people are doing, right? Yeah, I hear you. Um, For sure. And so I think that that's something that, you know, a combination of luck and, and some, some good things. Um, I would also say that I really enjoy community. I enjoy collaboration. I I work really hard to bring people together and try and work with as many people in this space as possible. Yeah. And I think that 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 helps perpetuate any of the things that I produce. Yeah. I don't do it because of that, but it's a really nice positive outcome from connecting with people and 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 helping like promote their content and getting them out there as well. Yeah. I, I see this domain of content or or any business really um, in the digital space. I don't look at it as cannibalistic, right? If if my name is on someone else's show and their name is on my show, we both reach each other's audience and it's like one plus one equals three mm -hmm. rather than just like, you know, I'm not taking anything from them. Um, it's an additive space. And I think that that's like one of the coolest things. And that's one of the reasons why um, you know, we started these trips, we started the learn media agencies because we can bring people together together. We have sort of collecting collective bargaining power to work with sponsors. We also have this sort of, um, like launch pad to, to come together and work on ideas, work on content, work on a lot of these other things. And to me, that's, that's something that like that's unbelievably rewarding. I get to be a part of all this other content, even if I'm not directly involved, mm -hmm. that makes me really happy. Yeah, and I, you were like one of the first people that I ever connected with when my channel was really small, like 30,000, 40,000 subscribers. So I remember that was like two years ago when we probably like, like connected. And so, yeah, I mean, the community aspect, I totally agree with. I also think that, you know, what you were saying about making improvements, that's, well, that's one area I need to work on. But I think, you know, it's an area that a lot of people don't take as much time in. They're like, Hey, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm at least putting something out there, but yeah, to kind of scale it and make it better and make those, those steady improvements, you know, you kind of have to do if you want to excel and continue to get better. Yeah. Oh, I think something that was really valuable to me was those small incremental ones. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to work on one thing, this video yeah. and I'm trying to get better at that. I see a lot of people, they spend so much time just like, absolutely working so hard on everything on a video, trying to make it perfect. Mm -hmm. And like the fact of the matter is, you know, I have what, like 200 videos on YouTube, yeah. more than that. <laughs> uh, if I put like that much stress on myself on each video, I probably wouldn't have that many. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. I mean, some people make a video a month and absolutely crush it. Um, that's not 
I, you know, I, I guess I made one video in the last month, but, <laughs> um, but you know, that wasn't how I, I really used to like to do things. Now I'm kind of really trying to hone in on making the highest quality content possible and sort of, uh, focus on just like making fewer videos that are a little bit, um, more meaningful to me. Right. Um, but you know, everyone has to find their own, their own, uh, their own mode of operation. So Something I think a lot of people have asked me, I'm sure have asked you, is are you considering or thought about quitting your like full-time job? Because you still have a full-time job, like I do. Have you thought about quitting and doing YouTube or content full-time and or like starting your own business or something surrounding like the data world? So I've never been asked that. You've <laughs> never been I was I was like, come on, I know um, you've been asked that before. So honestly, no. I love my like more full time work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's in sports. I get an unprecedented level of access and just really cool experiences from that. Mm -hmm. And it's something I think I'll always do. I mean, to be honest, I don't always work like full full time doing that. Yeah, um, it, it's something that uh, fortunately I have a ton of flexibility. Sometimes of the year it's really busy. Sometimes of the year it's fairly light. Right now it's very busy, and that's why I haven't been producing a ton of content. Yeah, but. At the same time, I also think it helps me keep sharp and helps me to have some additional credibility when I do produce content. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have any vision or dreams of being a YouTuber. Right. I think that that's a part of what I do. It's a part of the portfolio of things that, that I have out there. But I, I would like YouTube to be a fundamental component of being like an entrepreneur or a business person yeah. that, that is putting stuff out there. And I, you know, I've started a couple of businesses related to, you know, I have, I have some courses. I obviously have just normal YouTube content, taking sponsors. Mm -hmm. We've started Learn Media, which is where we have brought a lot of these creators together and we're able to serve them uh, a lot of sponsorship opportunities. Yeah. We're looking to get into events. We're also hosting things like this. And I'd like to see that portfolio continue to grow. To be honest, though, I've, I've bit off more than I could chew this year, and I'm trying to <laughs> dial it back a little bit next year. Trying to catch so, up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. Next year, I would really like to start to like dial it back. I really want to focus on the podcast. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite things to do. I get to have an hour, hour and a half long conversation with an incredibly interesting person every week. Sometimes yeah. more than one person each week. Right. And I would do that even if I wasn't recording it. Yeah. But the nice thing is, I get to record it and. Other people can listen to it, and I can also, in some sense, make a little bit of income from that. Mm -hmm. And then, like, what more would you want? Like, connecting with people, like, learning something, asking people who are interesting, really specific questions that you care about. Mm -hmm. um, I went to, down that rabbit hole a long <laughs> way, but I, obviously I'm pretty passionate about yeah. it. No, that's great. I, I, I feel like, and maybe you don't have the exact same viewpoint, but my, for me, it's like, if I quit and I don't, if I do YouTube full time, I kind of would feel somewhat out of touch. If I didn't have, I need, I need something to like root me a little bit in the data world in some way, whether I quit my full-time job or I stay in it. Like I need something to root me in that world. Cause if I get out of it and just do YouTube, it would be like, I'd fall behind. I feel like I'd fall behind. Yeah. I, I think it can be done. Mm -hmm. And I have a couple of friends who have a hundred percent done that. And I think the way to, to stay rooted is to work on things, to have projects, to do part-time work. I mean, you know, I look at my main work, you know, it's full-time, part-time. And so if I need to t dial it back, I can. If I need to start, um, you know, picking up more of that, I can as well. And yeah. so I, like, I don't look at it as like a real job because I have a lot of control over my hours and the stuff that I work on. Yeah. And I think a situation like that is kind of ideal. Yeah, that's super nice, though, because that flexibility is, if you don't have that type of flexibility, you can't really do this type of stuff. Yeah. Like it's super important. All right. So I only have two more questions. Um, and the last one's really serious kind of, and then the other one's not so serious. Okay. The first one, which is the more serious one is in 10 years, you look back and you know, you've seen everything that you've created in the next 10 years, even on top of what you've already done. What do you want people to remember you by? What do you want people to see you as at that time? So I'd like people to see me as someone who created value in a community and 
created much more value than I actually got out of it. Mm -hmm. I would like to get a lot of value out of it, but I would still like to be able to produce so much more than, than any of those things. I mean, I started all of this on YouTube, which is completely free, free platform. Mm -hmm. I've worked really hard for any of the educational content that I produce that's paid to be at a price point that it should be accessible to almost anyone. I also give away a ton of those things. Mm -hmm. I have the podcast where people are coming in and talking about their experience, giving these really unique case studies about their work or their life experience to help people maybe digest some of the things they're going through, whether it's with happiness, whether it's with their job, whether it's if they want to break into a career like this. And so to me, a lot of that is focused on like free or low cost education. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the other side of that, I obviously want to live comfortably. Uh, there are things I want. I don't have any like super lavish tastes. I don't really like like car. I like maybe food. I love to eat like some crazy stuff. Sure. Uh, I'd love to have like uh, maybe like a, a a farm or orchard somewhere. Yeah. So I'll be sipping some tea at my orchard, looking back, thinking about wow. I hope you know people uh, got into data through some of the things that I've created. Yeah. And they've made incredible advancements that I wasn't capable of. Right. I mean, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not like the greatest data scientist in the world, like maybe like 75th percentile yeah. at best. But hopefully, you know, there's a possibility that some of the things that I produce inspire someone who might be that like 99th percentile data scientist. So it's like advancing, yeah. advancing data science as a whole, get, helping people get into it who maybe wouldn't have had, had access to it. Without or, or might not even known about it or any of those types of things. Right. And, you know, to me, I think data and, and this this space is going to be something that transforms the world. In the short term, it's kind of been negatively with a bunch of social media stuff. But yeah. in the long term, I think it is something that ha can have a tremendous positive effect. Mm -hmm. And if I can play a small role through the education process of that, that would be very meaningful to me. Or a big process. I mean, a big part of it because... Yeah. Who knows? In like ten years, in the history books, they'll be like, you know, this guy named Ken G like sparked this fire. <laughs> that would be a hoot. <laughs> you know, you never know, right? But in ten years, you know, that's I think that's a really good outlook to have, right? Just giving back to the community so that the community can grow and be better through your content and and your community that you built. Yeah. I like that. I you know one thing I want to say is I I'm pretty clear about this. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm doing this just for the good of people and whatever. Like, it's selfish. Like, like it makes me feel good <laughs> to know that that might be a possibility, yeah. right? And I, I, I always want to remind people that it's okay to, to say that. It's mm -hmm. okay to be like that. I mean, obviously, I, like, I want to create value and do those, those other things. But why do I want to do that? It's not because I inherently care about all this humanity. It's because, like, me contributing, you know, it scratches it the itch inside of me and, and like... That's an okay motivation for a lot of these things. Yeah, I'm um, on the same boat. Yeah. It's like it just feels good to make the content and and help. You yeah. know, it definitely, definitely feels good for for me. I I mean, that's not a bad thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But you know, I, I think some people are they they look at creators or they look at people in a space and they're like, oh, they're like, yeah, they they're so. Um, oh my goodness, what's what's the word for for charity? They're so um, giving giving, or they're so. Um, I can't remember. Philanthropic. Part. Philanthropic. That's yeah. the one I was yeah. looking for. And I don't think that that has to be the case for you to create value or to do good things in the world. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people get wrapped in this this trap of like, am I a good person or am I a bad person? Because I don't have these motives. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's just not how the world works. Like, in, inherently, it, it bothers me when people are just like, I'm doing it for the good of the world. Like, I mean nothing. I will yeah. sacrifice all these things. Like, you're doing it because it makes you feel good and yeah. you're not talking about that. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know why I went on that. that um, <laughs> no, I mean, it's good. I mean, th that that is, as a, on a broader sense, very true because, you know, for most people, it's a good thing to feel good when you're doing something good for other people because then it motivates you to do it more. Yeah. And, and it gives you a drive and a passion to do more of it because if it was always for other people and then you felt like empty inside, I mean, that would not be fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah like why, why would you continue? Yeah. To <laughs> so my very last question, and if you haven't seen Ken's channel, you should check it out. But there's, there's something that I always see on the channel. I'm always, I, to be honest, I'm confused by it because I don't know the background. I haven't seen the episode where you talked about it, but like, What's with the papayas? Like, was there a backstory to this? What papayas? You know the papayas I'm talking about. <laughs> I just, I, I've, I've seen it so many times and you'll like put it as little snippets in your videos. And I'm like, there has to be some story or 
something behind it that I'm missing because I still don't understand it. <laughs> I live in Hawaii. There are papayas everywhere. They're delicious. Yeah, well, yes, that's and that's it. No, well, <laughs> so the Hawaii, uh, the Hawaii sunrise papaya is significantly better than any other papaya. Like in 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 like the continental U.S. Yeah, so most of the papayas in the continental U.S. come from Mexico. They're the Mexican red papaya. Okay, and they're sort of like yeah, they're not good. <laughs> they, they have sort of like a funky smell and taste. Okay, the the Hawaiian sunrise papaya has a, it's like very sweet. Uh, there's no like funkiness. It's almost similar to like a cantaloupe almost but a little bit more tender a little bit more sweet it's quite delicious okay so you uh, like you like the fruit but yeah, why, why is it on the channel all the time well you have to spread awareness I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like a really important thing it's just it's just um you know you're putting it out there for people to learn about <laughs> yeah this, i mean it's, it's a very important thing that no one is talking about is it like an endangered me. like <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you doing like donations to like no, charities I, for I, I, I think that that's part of the fun though right like I, I make these videos. I got to have creative control. I got to put like... Do whatever you want, man. It, right? Yeah. yeah. Papayas, why not? And so like, it's also... I mean, if you think about it, it also has some like subculture. Mm -hmm. It also adds like this weird context that people like asking about it. Like and, me. And yeah, <laughs> people, if people know, they know. Right. And so it's it's like, you know, a fun way to, to create a more tight-knit community and, and to like... To in, inspire people to ask or to yeah. be confused or you well, know I, I, I just know, don't it's a little it's a little videos. mysterious yeah, yeah, almost exactly, exactly. it's like what, what is he doing why is he doing this see I need something like that on my channel I just I don't have anything like that I need like something I eat I'm just gonna take um an orange <laughs> and then they'll have to watch this exact you interview eat it with the peel on just well so <laughs> like a banana you, you know, ki kiwis with the peel on uh -huh. messes with people and the thing is that. It's actually healthier to eat kiwis with the peel on. I've never done uh, that. It's a little bit sour. The texture's good. You mm -hmm. think it's going to be fuzzy and weird, but it's not. Interesting. Um, I, in grad school, I would just sit in the front row of class and just, like, I don't know why. I thought it was funny <laughs> to, like, intimidate the professors. Because I was that's also, a, like... That's a power trip right there. Yeah, one of, like... I was, like, one of the best students in the class. So yeah. it's just, like... I don't know. I have like some weird psychological issues, but I would sit there and I would just like eat an entire apple, including the core, and just like uh -huh. look at them in their eyes, stare at them. Yeah, and then like yeah, exactly, <laughs> and then like it cues you the entire, and like you're like, because I you know I teach now, yeah, and I'm like, what what would I do if a kid was doing this in the front row of yeah. the lecture? Would I like lose my? <laughs> would I like lose it laughing? Or, but. Yeah, you know, I, I just want to make it like a lighter, or, like make people think. Yeah. And, and it's funny. I mean, yeah. it is funny because every time I watch, I'm like, that is so stupid. Like, I don't <laughs> get it. Like, what is going on? With it? Oh, now it makes sense. Yeah. All right. I, I, I for the lore. You telling. Yeah, exactly. You, we need to, we need to other people outside of just your channel need to learn the context of this and then they get invested in it. And then when they watch it, they're like, I know where that's from. Exactly. <laughs> I'm one of the few. Exactly. Exactly. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for doing thank this interview. You. Super appreciate it. You are just a, a huge inspiration to a lot of people out there, including myself. Like when I was first starting, I, I tried to mimic some of your like style, but uh, now I have my own style. Yeah, I don't need you. You're anymore. an inspiration to me too. Yeah. So the, I mean, I guess the takeaway from this is I just don't need you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Later. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Go and check out Ken's channel. Uh, he has tons of videos and interviews on his. KNN podcast, as well as just Kenji on his YouTube channel. So um, go and check him out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Ken, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. All right. Bright data. <laughs> Bright data. <laughs>